guys and welcome back to Speak Freely here where we celebrate the freedom of speech and today we're going to be reacting to Candace Owens. I'm pretty sure you guys know who she is. No introduction needed. But she's going to be reacting to a Reddit story about a mother who is having a problem with her trans child and their trans child's mental health and I guess Candace Owens is going to give this mother some advice and her own opinion. All right, so we're getting right into it. But before you do, if you like this type of videos, please like, comment, and subscribe. Hit the bell to get notifications when I do upload. All of that really does help with the algorithm, guys. And if you'd like to support the channel even further, you can donate my PayPal and Cash App link in the description box below and also in the comment section. Of course, it helps, but you don't have to get this like, comment, and subscribe. Another great way to support the channel is visit my brand new merch shop. Links down below and links to all of the internet the platforms, my socials, all the ways to support me, and all the ways to do contact me for businesses in the links down below. Other than that, sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. All right, here we go. So the transgender debate is being waged all around the country and the world. Left versus right, conservative versus liberal, school systems versus the parents. The fog of this ideological war has never been thicker. But occasionally, occasionally, a ray of sunshine breaks through. A moment of inexorable truth that acts as a disinfectant to the pollution of lies. A moment that we can't unsee, or in this case, unread. That happened when a mother, in her desperation, posted to strangers on Reddit seeking help. Her post recently went viral. For those of you that don't know, Reddit is an anonymous online forum that people often turn to to seek advice from strangers regarding topics that may be too embarrassing to consult their friends and families regarding. And so a mother posted regarding her son, who she believes is her daughter because he has begun transitioning. I'm going to read that post verbatim. I think it's really important. Ready? The post reads, I have no clue what to do. Daughter can't get the bottom surgery and is becoming suicidal. Hello. I have always been in support of my transgender daughter. When she was still a boy and started expressing a want to be a girl, I did everything right. Therapists, then puberty blockers, everything. Now she is 20 and everything is falling apart. We had to hold off on the body surgery because of costs, but now finally had enough and went and got several consults. All have said the same thing. The puberty blockers have left her with a micro penis. She has to get part of her vagina made with her colon. Well, one of her friends had that surgery, and even years later, it smells fairly colon-like. Obviously, my daughter is now distraught. She's in counseling, but is becoming worse and worse in her mental state, and I am frantic. On top of this, she has never had any sexual function, no urges, no erections, even when she tried masturbation to see if she could simulate herself, nothing. The doctors say this may not change even after the surgery. Her dating life is dismal as well. We knew it would be hard, but it's impossible. The one man who was with her for a while soon just became frustrated by her lack of sexual anything and broke it off. I don't know what to do. A friend suggested I post here for advice. Please help me help my child. Okay. I mean, that is very, very, very sad. Okay, before Candace Owens gives her a bit of advice, this is the thing that a lot of the, these trans codish sort of uh, communities online, usually like Tumblr and TikTok, they, this is what they don't tell you. They don't tell you the negative side effects of these chemicals that they're putting in their bodies and these surgeries, right? They make it seem like it's all beautiful daisies and sunshines because that's what cults do. They don't tell you that if you stop your body from going through puberty, it doesn't fully develop, leaving you with like she said, a micro penis, then you are unable to invert your micro penis into a vagina. And I didn't know about this whole colon surgery, but it doesn't really sound like a great fix. Who wants a vagina that smells like your colon? I actually watched Blair White's video the other day and they were talking about the negative side effects of these puberty blockers. And I guess one of the main brand puberty blockers that most doctors use, they also use it on kitty diddlers in prison to I guess suppress their sex drive or something like that or almost like chemically castrate them and these are one of some of the same chemicals they're giving to kids and adolescents. Lupron is the drug that is known as puberty blockers. Yep. They give it to children at 11 or 12 to block yep. puberty right. and this is also the drug that's given to pedophiles 
in prison to sterilize and chemically castrate. That's right. The long-term effects. Do you know that they did studies on this in, in Finland and in Sweden for 20 plus years and they've shut it down. Yeah, in they Europe. shut it down. In a lot of countries in Europe, they're actually rescinding That's the right. guidelines that children need to be given period blockers because it's having negative ramifications. And, That's right. And these kids are very much guinea pigs in the sense that you know, we don't know what's going to happen to kids who right. do not go through a natural puberty transition. Mm -hmm. Puberty is actually the most important thing a human being can go through. H human beings need puberty. Your, your brain grows during puberty. So now we're right. going to dumb everyone down. What <laughs> sane human being thinks that a person will be healthy right. mentally, emotionally, spiritually, physically, mm -hmm. pausing their development mm -hmm. by 12? You are trapping a child in a child's mindset. That's right. And that's the kind of people we want running around. I don't think so. Well, then I start to get all weird conspiracy, dude, right? And I'm like, uh, is there like a bigger thing going on here? There, there has to be. There's a lot of money behind this because there's no way our tiny little little teeny community can have as much power that it has to change laws to literally get our flag flown at the White House. Yeah, it, <laughs> like, you know, they happening? wouldn't give us this power unless they were using it that's for something right. else. And, and that's why, and even Blair White herself has admitted to this, that her sex drive has plummeted. It's literally nil, and I'm, maybe there's other pills you can take to help that but they also don't tell the kids these things because again they have to make it sound like it's daisies and roses and everything's going to be utopia if you just go if you just become um trans i'm not even telling people that the studies show even if you ha have the mental disorder of gender dysphoria transitioning a lot of the times isn't the answer and a lot of times when people transition they still battle with extreme gender dysphoria and that's why the suicide rate does not decline once people transition now the trans activists will say well that's just because people are transphobic which isn't true and there's no data to back that up that's just sort of like the hearsay and anecdotal stories and they also don't tell you that a lot of adolescents or kids who might struggle with gender dysphoria or just body dysphoria period usually grow out of it once they pass adolescence and go into young adulthood so they would have wouldn't have had to transition anyway because they would eventually just grow out of it and usually just become gay men and women and now you have children making the decision and even if they truly does have dysphoria or gender dysphoria they would, might have just grown out of it anyway and but they lie to these people and tell them like oh no it's fine it's all reversible nothing's permanent and that's literally just like medically untrue and unfactual and so these people are in my opinion, are being abused by the system, by adults, and by these cult-like uh, trans groups on, online who don't want to give you all the information. And when somebody doesn't want to give you the, all, the, all the information, it's because they're trying to create a narrative and they're trying to spread propaganda. But anyway, let's get into what Candace Owens has to say. I mean, that is very, very, very sad to read. And typically, we wait until the end of the show to answer questions from back at home. But today, I'm going to answer this question, this woman's plea, in front of the entire world. So, dear anonymous mother, there is no other way for me to respond to you other than honestly and openly in the hopes that other children, other mothers, will be spared the tragedy that is happening in your household. The truth is that you have mutilated your once perfectly healthy, growing son over a feeling that he had. Ultimately, it is you alone that is responsible for this mutilation because you prioritize acquiescing to an insane cultural narrative rather than recognizing basic, immutable, biological facts. Once upon a time, your son, now an adult man, used to be an imaginative little boy. Children believe in all sorts of things that are imaginative when they're growing up. Sometimes those things are harmless, like Santa Claus and the Easter Bunny, and so we as adults play into their magical minds. Harmless make-believe ideas are what childhoods are all about, but knowing the difference between what is harmless and what is harmful is our responsibility. For example, it's okay for a child to believe he is Superman, but it is not okay for him to believe truly that he can fly, because human beings cannot fly. And a child looking to don a cape and leap from a bedroom window can seriously harm themselves, or worse, kill themselves. They may not understand this as we pull them away from the window. They may even scream and kick and cry because it's who they believe they are, who they want to be. But our primary responsibility as parents is to at first keep them alive, with truth, showing them right from wrong, 
It's why there are parental cliches like, you'll understand when you're older, because they will. So your child came to you and he said, I want to be a girl, mommy. And rather than explaining to him why ultimately that is not a biological possibility, no more than flying like a bird is, you went along with the delusion. You essentially allowed your child to jump from the figurative bedroom window and now your once upon a time child is now a man who is crashing into the Earth's surface all at once. The worst possible manner of learning that gravity exists. He's already harmed himself and now you're wondering if he's going to take it a step further and kill himself because there's no way to undo what's been done. Reality has caught up with fiction. Truth has caught up with the lie. His depression is stemming from the fact that he realizes he will never be a woman. Sure, they can use parts of his colon to give him something that maybe resembles a vagina and smells like a rectum, but he will never be a woman and he knows that. Deep down, so do you, mom. And his suicidal thoughts are stemming from the realization that he can never really have the opportunity to be a man now either because his mother allowed his sexual parts to be mutilated because he can't feel anything. He'll never know what physical desire for the rest of his life. He'll never know what that means. He'll never have a normal relationship. And that was a decision that was made for him in his childhood. Yes, alongside a host of predatory doctors and therapists, who should all be imprisoned, by the way, you agree to the bodily mutilation of your son. And so my heart aches for him because he is a true victim. He was a child victim, a young man whose life was stolen from him. How does it get better? Well, it starts with your own reckoning, mom. You're mentally unstable and you have harmed your son irrevocably. And yet you are still holding on to the belief that you have a daughter and that you have done, as you said, quote, everything right. But in fact, the exact opposite is true. You have a son and you have done everything wrong. You both need help separately. And it begins with acknowledging the truth. The truth is that transitioning, despite its cultural popularity, is not a solution to anything. That's why suicide and depression rates go up for individuals after they complete the process. Not before, not during, but after. Because they meet gravity. And the weight of realizing that they can never truly and fully go back is paralyzing. Fortunately, there are groups dedicated to helping these individuals. Groups like Sex Change Regret, an established charity run by formerly trans individuals helping people like your son. So it's not hopeless. Your son needs to hear that and he needs to know that. It is not hopeless. There are people out there who were similarly victimized just like him and who are ready and willing to help. Your son needs to know that while there is no way back, there is fortunately a way forward. And it begins with recognizing truth. Thanks for joining me on this segment of Candace. All right, that was Candace Owens uh, speaking her truth, the truth, the fact you decide. Personally, I would have not addressed the mother the way Candace Owens addressed the mother. I'm not criticizing Candace Owens, but I do believe like Candace Owens has sort of the same um, ideas around transgenderism that Ben Shapiro does, which I believe they both kind of feel like it doesn't exist, it's not a thing, and no one should ever transition, which I don't necessarily agree with but I'll get back to that in a minute um, and I both have heard Ben Shapiro and Candace Owens say look I have an audience that relies on me to say the truth and I'm not going to disappoint my audience by glazing over things for the sake of someone else's feelings so I will speak the truth their truth the truth you decide or I will uh, stick to my values and my principles over you know soothing someone's feelings or emotions and I get that for sure but I also feel like sometimes Candace Owens say things a little bit to be provocative and that's not a dig I'm just saying that I that's what I believe and I feel like sometimes she says those things because it gets her attention and I think she wants that attention because she feels like she has something to say she wants people to hear it so I think she says things sometimes to sort of draw people in go viral so people are like oh, I can't believe you said that you know what I mean like the whole George Floyd Floyd is not a hero or going after Cardi B and stuff like that so I'm not 
digging at her and I'm not disagreeing with the way, the way she said things. I'm just saying I wouldn't have spoken that way personally because you don't know the mom. I wouldn't say I will say the mom is unstable because I don't know the mother, right? You might say because of the decision she's made, but you, you can only know what you know. And there are people that grow up in cults who do the most hein heinous things to other human beings and they totally believe what they're doing is right because that is the only, the only knowledge that they have. I'm not giving them a uh, you know, pass, but still. Um, and so if I can understand why a mother would go through with transitioning her kid even though I think it's wrong and I think it's child abuse, but I can understand when you have doctors and communities and activists and teachers and your government and media and books telling you if you don't do this and your child kills himself, it is your fault. Their blood is on your hands. You are a bad mother. You're a bad parent. And this is what you're supposed to do at the tiniest sign that your child might be in the wrong body or, or not. So like I would say that the mother might be just much as a victim as a child, but the child is probably even more of a victim because he was a child. And it is really up to the parents. That's why you have parents. That's why kids don't come out of their mother's vagina walking and talking and paying rent because they need parents. And you're, as a job, as a parent, you're supposed to know the long-term causes and effects of things. And a child, they, their brain hasn't even developed yet to even understand that. And so it's your job to know those things, even if they don't get it, even if they yell, even if they throw a tantrum, even if they slam the door in your face and say, I hate you, you're still supposed to make the most, the best decision for your child, even if it's the least popular decision, right? I think the Superman analogy was a perfect analogy. Like kids do imagining things, and you let them imagine when it's safe. But as soon as they think they can like jump off the roof and fly, then you tell them, no, actually, you're not Superman, and you cannot fly. And so I personally. Do you think transgenderism is a thing? I think gender dysphoria is a thing. However, I think gender dysphoria is affects a very, very tiny, tiny minority. And I think out of that tiny minority, only a tinier minority would be fixed anyway. Their symptoms would decease if they got if they transitioned. But that is such the far and few between, and I think that's how it should be treated. Um, especially when you're young, I think you should be allowed to grow out of adolescence before you start transitioning, or you can make that decision yourself as an adult. Because again, a lot of people do just grow out of their dysphoria. dysphoria. Anyway guys, tell me what you think of this. Do you agree the way uh, Candace Owens approached this? Are you like full on it? Do you agree with that you would have, I don't know, come, into a, come at the mom a little bit more democratically? Um, just tell me what you think of what I said, what she said. Let me know in the comment section below. Please like, comment, subscribe. Hit the button to get your notifications when I do upload. All of that really does help with the algorithm, guys. And if you'd like to support the channel even further, you can donate my PayPal and Cash App link in the description box below. And also in the comment section, of course it helps, but you don't have to. You can just like, comment, subscribe. Another way, great way to support the channel is to visit my brand new merch shop. I also have a second travel vlog channel. I travel as a lifestyle or a little abroad if you'd like to know where i am in the world you can go to the description box below and also in the comment section hit the link go subscribe to my travel vlog channel and or follow me on my travel instagram um, my stories is usually what's most of the date and i also have another my main commentary channel links down below and you guys have an amazing day bye